Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mona Gohara, and this is Dear Derm. Today, we're gonna to talk about what happens to your skin after a long, cold winter. So after a long winter, you may notice that your skin is ultra dry. Here's why. First of all, the outside is so cold and the cold affects our skin barrier and makes it flaky and sometimes itchy. Also, to give ourselves a reprieve from the cold, we get in our cars or go in our house and blast the heat. Another irritant that isn't so kind on our skin. And I know if you're anything like me, I take those hot, hot showers that just feel so good. Good for our soul, but not so good for our skin. Now these things may cause dry and itchy inflamed skin, or they can exacerbate or make worse conditions like eczema and psoriasis. The cold bothers our skin because it's an irritant to our skin barrier. Remember, our skin barrier keeps irritants out and moisture locked in. The cold breaks down and weakens that barrier so things aren't working as smoothly as they should be. Hot water and heat, similar to the cold, break down and weaken our skin's natural barrier and that's why our skin is dry. Let's take a deeper dive into where your skin may be most irritated from those cold winters. The first of which is just generalized dry, flaky skin. You know that kind of skin like when you take off your socks and there's like a plume of stuff that comes off? I know that's gross, but it definitely happens all the time, right? And that is your classic dry winter skin. No inflammation, no redness, just those little plumes and flakes that are all around. I like to treat that with a very good barrier repair cream. So every night or every morning, make sure that you use a barrier repair cream on your arms and legs, the areas that are most likely to be affected by that dry flaky skin. In that barrier repair cream, make sure to look for ingredients such as ceramides and glycerin and even niacinamide, which may help to calm any itch that you may be experiencing. My favorite is La Roche-Posay Lipicar Balm. Next on the list is those dry hands, which can be super annoying because they can crack and hurt. And there's no getting around the constant hand washing and sanitizing in the cold. It just seems like a no-win situation. So number one on the list of what to do for dry hands is to please use a gentle cleanser. Although I know it smells good and feels good, make sure that the cleansers that you're using are non-soap cleansers and that they say the words gentle and hydrating on them. This is very important and just as effective at getting rid of germs. Second, and this is a little trick I do, I actually made my son do it just a couple weeks ago. You can go to the store, get yourself some white cotton gloves, choose a nice heavy emollient cream, put it on, Cut off the tips of those gloves so you can work and text and do whatever you wanna do. And let that cream soak deep into your skin so that it allows for hydration and it doesn't get all over your nice clothes and furniture and make a mess of everything because nobody wants to deal with that. Lastly, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but this is definitely something I recommend to all my patients and I know a lot of my colleagues do too. If you have those cracks on the tip of your finger, this is what I call Home Depot Dermatology. Go get yourself a little super glue, put it in the cracks and bond the skin. I promise you, your skin will be a lot less irritated and painful. Thirdly, you can get dry skin on your lips. Now you may be kind of compelled to go out to get that like menthol-y, camphor -y lip balm, which a lot of people do, but believe it or not, those can be more drying and more irritating. I like to keep it simple here. Make sure just to use a Vaseline base, something like Vaseline or Aquaphor, to help keep the skin well lubricated. Another trick, check out your toothpaste, because you know what makes our lips super cracked? Oftentimes, whitening toothpaste. So just take a look, we all use them, I definitely use them and have to check myself sometimes, and make sure that that's not a contributing factor. If you don't think it is, great. Grab yourself a little Vaseline, put it on, it dubs as a lip balm too. If you have irritation in the corners of the mouth or around your mouth, those are different types of conditions. Make sure to talk to your board certified dermatologist because they can definitely be treated. If you have red flaky skin, particularly on your scalp, 
elbows, knees, buttocks, or even notice that your fingernails are a little bit more fragile, you may be suffering from a condition called psoriasis. Psoriasis is common, happening in about 20% of the population. And before actually, probably five to 10 years ago, was definitely considered chronic. Now we have a lot of advancements that have come from science and research that can help people who struggle with psoriasis. Some of the options around psoriasis, again, are topical medications or anti-inflammatories. Here's one that's very interesting. We as dermatologists, we're always telling you to stay out of the sun, but actually in the case of psoriasis, we may suggest that you seek ultraviolet light in a controlled setting, of course, in a dermatology office to help to bring down inflammation in your skin. There are oral medications that can help with people who struggle with psoriasis. And of course, what I think is one of the most revolutionary classes of medications in the past decade to 15 years, a class of medications called biologics, which are injectable medications that help literally on the molecular level to stop psoriasis before it even starts. Let's talk about biologics for a second. Now, somebody who has psoriasis all over certainly may be a candidate for biologics, but the less obvious candidate may be somebody who has been dealing with psoriasis for a long time and their medications previously just aren't helping their condition. So to me, really anybody with psoriasis is somebody that is a potential candidate for biologic, of course, taking into consideration your own individual medical history. Biologics are very easy to use, and what they do is that they specifically target these little proteins in the skin called interleukins, and they absorb these extra interleukins that are the villains because they're running around causing inflammation in, in, in our skin. So instead of just kind of throwing a cream at it and swatting around and just praying for the best, this is targeting the exact moment in time when psoriasis begins. For me and my patients, it's something that comes up whenever I'm treating psoriasis. So unless you move to Florida, we're not gonna stop winter. Here are some ways that we can combat that end of winter skin. Number one, do your best, I know this is hard, but try to take a lukewarm shower. I'm not promising that I can or will do that, but it's definitely a suggestion that can help soften the skin. In the shower, or in general for that matter, just try and use a non-soap, hydrating, gentle cleanser. You'd be surprised how much damage harsh soaps can do to the skin. And of course, common sense, when you get out of the shower, pat, don't rub yourself dry, and moisturize within three minutes, capitalizing on the ambient humidity of the bathroom and the shower. So I just urge you at the end of the season to just kind of take stock of what's happening with your skin. If you notice that it's not quite as soft as you want it to be or it's a little bit more inflamed, try simple modifications. Maybe make your shower a little cooler, use a little heavier moisturizer, but if that's not working, make sure to seek help from a board certified dermatologist because I promise you there are a lot of options. So the best part of winter is that it ends and this too shall pass. So don't worry, we are here for you to provide solutions to everything including that pesky winter skin. I'm Dr. Mona Gohara. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us today on Dear Derm. Leave any questions or comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Well and Good.